yeah thanks session is about optimizing uh yeah so the session is about optimizing your deck uh how we can embrace the deck params feature to you know make it simple and make it efficient and uh, keep your you know you can keep your deck code dry as well uh a brief introduction i am sumit uh i made my first commit uh to apache airplane 2015 so it's like 9 years uh for me and um, yeah right now i am uh tech leader uber and previously worked at companies like twitter astronomer and uh, qbol as well so uh, i like from talking to people i know that people are kind of aware what are the deck params but if you talk like you know to 2020 uh one or before like you know deck params were kind of a hidden feature and many people were not really really aware about it um so i think that this feature is like the part the deck params is actually part of the airflow since the beginning or at least the beginning i'm aware of like you know 2015 onwards um you, you know major rework was uh, done in 2021 and we'll talk about the journey of that thing like what was the what was done uh, during that time um and uh, right now it actually supports a lot of things like for example you can do validations you can say what is the mandatory inputs what not you can provide the data types like list string integer you can do validations of the range length and things like that and uh, there is a nice trigger deck ui also you know uh, evolved around it uh, which let you you know control a lot of things and uh, you know this kind of basically you can convert a full fledged form a ui form on the basis of the deck params you have defined in your in your deck um so let's take a very hypothetical example and it's a probably simple example right where we have a deck uh, you know which can be triggered and uh, that we're actually going to generate some kind of report and then the parameters it takes let's say city code you know uh, sfo nyc something like that right and then there is a range there is a duration like the start time and end time so the our data engineer you know wrote this deck for us um and uh, when you go to the trigger ui it would have generate something like this so i i hope that you guys can spot some of the issues right away right you know you can see that okay like what is the city code like you know what is the format of it i don't know what is the time format right? what is the start date end date with the take time stamp or not or like time zone or not and things like that right so we we took this feedback and say we we go again or we went back to the data engineer and said oh these are the feedback we are getting from our uh, users so he said okay can't do much maybe do something like this so this is slightly better right at least i can see okay the city code is sfo so something like that i should be putting the city code the start time and end time at least giving some format it's like year month day or you know otherwise i would not even know what this format would be so it will solve the problem up to a con up to a level right but still it doesn't solve all right um for example what if i just delete the row or delete the input of city code you know any guesses how it would have behaved right any idea like but as a user i may not be aware about it right i will think okay i am not providing city code uh, or whatever right so the same thing goes here as well right if i don't change anything it will go it will take the default values and then default values would be problematic sometime because you know that is not the intended date or the city code a user wanted to run against or uh, you know sometime it would actually uh, just end up in end up in running the you know unnecessary uh, day runs which will actually eventually be consuming your resources and then user will find out oh like oh i made the mistake i did not provide the right date let me correct it out so yeah of course that is a solvable thing right so how do we solve it right the one way to solve is that we can add a you know a python task in each of the deck a very first task in the each deck which can do this validations and then let the user you know uh, when the user trigger the deck the deck would deck run will going to happen and the first task the python operator would actually run it would validate the parameter you know like the time is correct or not the city code is proper or not and all those things and it will fail it will say to user oh this is failed like right? so that is one of the solution but the problem with that you have to add that python task in each and every deck of yours and also if there is any new parameter or is there any change in the parameter you have to kind of modify that uh, task again so that is going to be like very you know tedious task uh, for anybody to so that is why we uh, kind of uh, rethink uh, 
you know and then did a like a requirements uh, gathering and uh, you know different phases of it right so so couple of things uh, they were like very top of the mind right it should it must be backward compatible because we cannot break uh, you know thousands and thousands of decks written by the community right all over in their companies we cannot make it uh, you know a very big chain it has to be backward compatible uh, it should support uh, you know different kind of values you know types especially like a string integer boolean to start with at least right uh, of course it can go uh, to your many 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 folds as well um it should have the validations uh, options as well like you know what should be the min max value of integer like if i am taking a age as a parameter i should be like bounding it to some values like maybe 0 to 100 or 0 to 150 i don't know like it should not be like 1000 or something like that, right so there should be some validations inbuilt validations supported supported and also uh, it should maintain the consistent uh, you know across the ui api and cli so people who are aware with the airflow development uh, they would know that the cli api and then ui you know kind of flow through different directions actually it might be better now but it used to be like different different uh, you know path crossing over and reaching to a certain uh, place eventually um, so these are the must ones and then good to have would be like you know that ui should be able to hint out what are the values should be it should be providing uh, you know the validations rejects matchings uh, the length, range, whatever, all sort of validations as well, um, and must like at least it should show what is required and what is optional, like right? which is you can omit if you do not like it, or without providing this value, it is not allowed you to run that tag, right? So we created a proposal. Um, you know, the proposal was to you know create a uh, set of classes or maybe at least a class called param, and that should be, you know. There should be inbuilt uh, replacement for the existing params dictionary. Yeah, so that is the very first requirement, right? Very the first proposal, basically. Um, you know that it should be having a mean to store what are the default values, and uh, it also should be having the methods to validation and all those things so people can write what they want and what are the validations. Uh, you know, this thing would do either on to UI or maybe like uh, triggering a day. Um, uh, you know, uh, the similar thing like, you know, it should have a method to validate and resolve the things, uh, you know, it should, it must be easily serializable uh, because at the time the deck serialization was already a thing and uh, if we're not able to serialize it properly, then it would be actually creating a lot of problem, right? So that is kind of a must thing for us to have. And uh, yeah, I think that last point is like it should work with the normal deck writing or decorated deck writing or many future version of it is coming as well. Um, so there are different approaches actually we tried it out, um, you know, and then uh, I will just go through a couple of them like on the top of the list. Uh, one of them was like Pydentic. Pydentic is said to be the fastest, uh, you know, Python library uh, to provide the data and type validations. Uh, so fastest with asterisk because it depends upon how did you do this, uh, you know, testing of it. Um, so if you look at it, uh, you know, the right side of it, you know, it's a simple code like what would have been look like if we go with, uh, you know, Pydentic where it would be a, you know, uh, there is a integer param class. Similarly, we would have the various classes for a string, boolean, uh, you know, and things like that. And uh, it would be having some default uh, method, uh, you know, written by say, by us or by the community to do the various uh, validations around say minimum value of uh, integer or maximum value of integer. Uh, you know, it would hold the default value as well and uh, things like that, right? It's quite easy to implement, right? I don't. I think anybody can you know, write it, and it, it's easy to extend as well. Like I could extend this class to maybe like create a base class for numeric ones, and then extend it to int and decimal and uh, float and whatnot, right? Um, but after doing it, we found out that you know there is a lot of uh, repeated work we have to do, right? You know there is a lot of uh, boilerplate code we have to kind of generate for each of the different parameters uh, or param classes we are going to generate over the time, and then. Uh, the modifications of any such thing into it, it would actually be very painful. For example, if I add a new field into it, um, just say example, let's say base or something like that, right? Whether it's a 10 base or 2 base or whatever, like, you know, some, some other class maybe. You know, I have to kind of go and modify each of these methods because each of these methods would, would, would be required uh, that another parameter coming in and then they have to factor in uh, what is uh, that new parameter. And... Uh, 
maintaining or like you know doing modifications would be like very very painful and uh, even if this classes keep on coming there would be big whole chunk of the code just to maintain this params right so so that is one uh, the second one was like attr um so attr is basically uh, you know very famous python library uh, to provide the you know class methods it to actually create uh, you know out of the box uh, Uh, getters and setters for various classes and uh, provide lot of data validations, uh, you know, methods as well via pre and post hooks. Um, um, and if you can pattern take, uh, not but yeah, ATTRs are already being used in Airflow as well in some of the classes. Um, so we actually tried it out this thing as well. Creating classes is also quite easy here. If you see it like, uh, and uh, you know, it 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 would be easy to extend as well. Uh, but I think it also. Fails at the same two points, right? Like the repeated work and then painful modifications. Uh, if I have to uh, do this thing uh, for different classes, I have to keep on adding, uh, you know, similar version of it, like in copying or something like that. And if I have to add any modification, like I have to add any extra parameter to this class, I would have be like editing like the the post and the call method and things like that. So it also falls under the similar parameters basically. um the third one um you know uh, the json schema so we were actually using json uh, json schema to uh, the dex realization code already in airflow and uh, it has basically very powerful and extensive uh, you know building blocks to define uh, you know define the validation schema right and json schema is basically used into multiple places for multiple use cases and uh, we try to see if it can fit into our use case as well which is like uh, taking you know taking the values uh, from the user and doing the validation at the run time um so it has basically lo lots of out of the box uh, you know rules and validation method uh, there is a lot of uh, you know different frameworks as well for example there is a javascript framework as well uh, for json schema so json schema is basically a dsl it is not a language bound it can be used into python java go you know in any language in javascript as well so it gives a kind of a common ground uh, you know where you can define this dsl and then you know it could be can be converted into uh, you know lot of big features uh, later on as well um the only downside uh, could feel is that it it people has to write the complex rules and that can be overwhelming right because it's a json schema which is a dsl um so even for doing a simple task sometime it might require people have to do or write uh, extensive dsl and that could be a problematic uh, thing for the uh, you know users but overall after evaluating uh, you know multiple such thing we finally decided uh, you know to use uh, json schema and uh, created uh, the deck param so the deck param was actually first uh, launch in airflow 2.0 it is it is based out of uh, you know json schema and uh, it is it was actually in drop replacement for the params dictionary so if people want to use param dictionary they are happy to do it if they want to use the new params class they could use as well and their deck would work like uh, without any issues it will work in their flow uh, 2.2 onwards right if they are using the new params schema otherwise they could use just continue using the dictionary as well uh, it was a fully backward uh, compatible as uh, you know we said uh, as i said and then it would support uh, you know lot of uh, different types validations list integer boolean and it also comes with the lot of uh, you know i will call pre built uh, you know validation formats like i just have to say it's a uri or it's a email address or it's a, like ipv6 ipv6 ipv4 and like there are other other validations as well so it's uh, those rules can be used uh, you know uh, out of the box like people do not need to like kind of uh, write or think like okay how how would i write a email validator right what would be the syntax out of it right i don't need to think about it right? it's a, it's a already available there so hey by chance we noticed it it was you know september 14 2021 so it's like almost uh, practically like 3 years ago uh, when uh, it was merged uh, yeah so slight changes into the deck right uh what i did is like just added param 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 and then the type and then min 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 length max length uh you know things like that and then there was no change in the ui if you notice 
the UI is still the same. But what it provided, if I try to, you know, uh, trigger the take with a value which is not proper, it would fail right away. It would say that, okay, the, the parameter is mandatory, it is not provided to us. Or it would say that, okay, the length is not right, it is not SF. Uh, still, it not tell us, uh, you know, that what would do the list of values or anything like that, but still it will tell, okay, this is not the proper. And it would save a lot of resources uh, for the user, basically. It will not go and run, uh, you know, uh, the take with the wrong values and eventually fail. Um, also, the same behavior would be, uh, you know, would be done via CLI or APIs triggering as well. So it will honor, it would honor uh, UI triggering or CLI or uh, uh, API triggering as well. Uh, so here, uh, so after that, that was the earlier trigger UI page. And then uh, thanks to a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of people like Jen uh, and a uh, lot of people I do not know personally. Some of them I know like Brent. Uh, and uh, Jed and other folks who actually done a lot of a uh, lot of work on uh, this trigger day UI, basically a fabulous work. Um, and then uh, I think that Airflow 2.6 has the very first version of the the new UI page, the new trigger UI page. Um, and later on, they keep on adding uh, new and new features. And then 2.7.0 also has a lot of uh, new features around this thing. For example. Uh, you know, the multiple selects one, uh, you know, the providing the labeling to the select box, uh, drop downs, uh, I think, uh, uh, I think auto select, like, multi, uh, like suggest, auto head suggestion and things like that. A lot of features were added. And in fact, I was seeing that there was some PR got merged today as well, uh, <laughs> talking like adding some new feature into the trigger tag UI. So it's kind of, it took some time to reach here, but it kind of um, created uh, a path to to achieve what we thought when we were building uh, the, oh, okay, yeah, it, it still evaluated to, to to the path what you are thinking. So thanks to all these amazing folks, and of course I might have missed some folks, which I'm pretty sure of. So thanks to those guys as well. Yeah. Uh, so now, if if you you know if in the letters, Jake, you know you can do uh, if it is a uh, the similar similar example. If I convert into something like this, like where I can provide a param with a you know lot of things, for example, enum, uh, which I provide in the city codes, like say SFO, NYC, or WDC, and I can provide a title. So it will convert into a proper form like this, right? And then here it is not showing, but you can actually select from a you know drop down, like which which are the city codes you want to run or you want to trigger this day. Um, Similarly, if I open uh, this start time or end time, it would give me a proper, um, you know, proper deck uh, date picker here. So actually, there's a long journey from there to here. And then if you look at the latest airflow, uh, I have not, maybe not, could not, you know, list down all the things it supports, but these are the top of the things in my mind, uh, where you can have a date picker, where you can have a like, uh, you know, inline validation at the UI itself, where it's saying, okay, this city can text the three characters, but you are given only two. And uh, another cool feature I liked is the, uh, the picking of the previous trigger deck parameters. Like, so if I'm triggering deck very much, I don't need to fill the whole form again and again, right? If there's like 10 values or 20 values it's taking, I can just use something which I triggered, uh, you know, previously. And of course, there are a lot of cool features around it, like JSON forms as well, uh, you know, and uh, uh, I think the type head suggestions as well, uh, which actually like it is not blocking you to write from the given list, but it's suggesting that what are the things you can uh, do. Uh, future, so there, uh, one of the things we thought at the time of writing this feature is that maybe people can actually extend it to writing new params themselves, like something which is not supported by the JSON schema. Like, you know, what are some, I have a use case which is not like which is not possible by the using the J JSON schema DSL, then maybe I can extend this class and I need to kind of just have like say init method of course and there's a resolve method. Using two methods, you know, I should be able to write in maybe create a new class out of it and then use it instead of, you know, standard params one. So that was also there, but I think it might not be uh, needed yet, but in may future it might require it as well. And I was just talking to James and he mentioned that at the some point we should be actually like, you know, 
uh, getting rid of the dagger and conf, conf as well, which is something a different concept altogether, but very similar to the uh, the deck params as well. Thank you. <laughs>